So Blaze was a superstar on Friday, and then yesterday Emma jumped her for the first time, and we did two strides, two strides, two strides, two strides, two strides, and she was like a little professional. So we might do that today again, because that was really cool. Um, so how far into your warm-up are you? What have you been able to do so far there, Leo? Okay, canter both sides. How's she feeling going up to canter? Okay. She's the right lead. She's a bit rough. Yeah. She's tripping on her right back. Okay. Let's get your helmet back on. <laughs> Gotta have those helmets on. So I ever had fun? I remember I had so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, she was supposed to ride my pony yesterday and my pony was lame. So I don't know what's going on there. So she ended up riding her and she was great. She's ridden her for me a couple times just like when she needs exercise just to get her out. But she's never jumped or anything. And the last day she did this grid and everything and it was awesome. Start on the left, which has been her easier side. Transition, keeping your hands up and even, and canter transition. Good, make a circle where you can, and again, trot and canter when you're ready. I want you to make sure that your legs are staying under your hips, back on her belly. Point your toes just a little bit forward there, Leah. And trot transition. And this time let's walk and then canter. Keeping her attention, stretch up, prepare. Okay, we'll do, we'll do another one of those. So it wasn't terrible, but there was a little bit of a delayed reaction, right? She wasn't totally ready to go when you asked. So stretch up tall into the walk again. And then when she's walking, you need to keep her attentive to you so that when you ask, she's ready to listen. Good, and again like that. So I saw the little kick there uh, before you asked. I would say it's the right idea, but probably a little bit too strong, right? You don't want to kick her and make her trot. You want to just remind her with the leg, okay, are you listening? And canter. Try that again. Yeah, good for you. Give her a pat there. Good girl. So there, you did a really good job of your like, are you ready? Not yet. Are you ready? Canter. And that's the thing is we have to have her ready, but not ahead of it either. Not behind your aid and not anticipating and doing it before you ask. Okay, keep cantering, Leo. Let's come across the diagonal somewhere, across the ring somewhere. And do a simple change through the trot onto the right lead. Good. Praise her there. She's being a good girl. Think about the bend and balance here on a circle. Think with yourself about keeping your legs back a little bit more, knees bent, toes pointing forward. I'd like to see your foot a little bit less home in the stirrup, meaning that your stirrups are a little too far back on your feet right now. So try to wiggle your stirrup forward closer to your toes. Okay, feel that, feel that, feel that. Does that feel right? 
Well, change it then. Good. Good. Step your stirrups a little more forward on your feet. And let's see your two-point large around the ring. Now feel your balance into your lower legs, right? Knees bent, calf muscles on. And circle there, Leo, and start to stretch up into the saddle. And then trot and canter when you're ready. Remember, we're going to stay on the inside track, so stay off the wall when you come straight. Good, and trot transition. Trot transition, yeah, praise her there, very nice. Nice and smooth gearing down there. Good, up to canter when you're ready, looking up to the left. Good. And now sink in and walk. Stay on your circle here. Walk, body language, looking up to the right. Don't let her yank the reins away. And canter. That's such a bad ho habit that horses develop, right? Where they root the reins away from us. So you have to make sure you're holding your contact, you're holding your reins so that she doesn't succeed in that moment, right? She needs to not be rewarded for yanking the reins away. Good, and walk transition. Legs back on her belly and canter transition. Okay, not bad, a few steps of trot snuck in there. But it was a, a nice step into the canter. Let's try that one more time. Trot and walk. Looking up, keeping your hands up and apart. Walk. Good, good, Leo. Good, those are coming, right? She's Still pretty new with learning the walk to canter, but those are pretty good. Okay, let's give her a little walk break. I want you, Leo, to just shorten your stirrups a hole before we get jumping. I think that's going to help you to keep your knees bent and your legs where they need to be. Right now they're getting a little bit out in front of you. Yeah, I think so. And she was so good for Emma yesterday, and yeah, just way less fussy. Maybe the, the, the teeth weren't really done. Good. Yeah, I think so. I'm just going to adjust um, the nose bands a little bit low. Yeah, I sure hope so. I mean, sometimes you, you think it's going to help, and then you don't really notice a difference, but I have noticed she's much quieter. You know, and, and what a distraction for her and the rider when she's going to town on the bit all the time. Yeah. So is it okay, Shane, if I get time this week, if I just try to clip her? Yeah, knock yourself out. Okay. Where you are right now is good. Okay, so your toes are just out a tiny bit. Just enough that your calf muscle is really on. Okay, and then remember, you don't want to be able to see your toe when you're up there. Mm -hmm. So make sure you've got the bend in your knee, and then the whole leg is on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to do a canter circle down at the end. On the left, you're going to canter over the grain white pole. Two strides, jump. Five strides, land two strides out. Okay, so the first two is going to feel a little more forward. The second two is going to feel a little bit waiting. They're exactly the same distance, but this one she's got the momentum of the jump heading into the two stride, where that one she's just stepping over the pole and then has to go forward to the jump. Okay, so let's do that off the left, and as you kind of get used to the exercise, you'll 
you'll see how much canter you need. I want you to try to start with a regular working canter and a regular working distance at the pole. And to be able to kind of go right, right to work and right to the jumping because the pony's also spooky. <laughs> so Blaze wasn't spooky at all, so Emma could just kind of cruise along and get right to it. Okay, I like this canter. Now you probably need a little more oomph here for the first pull. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Wait, two, and a wiggle, and a three. Well, that was fun. Awesome, Leo. So she probably spooked at that little brown gate, huh? Oh, at the plants? All right. Just walk her between the cones while you're there. That would be a good strategy. So you just missed an opportunity to school her there. Do you know what I mean? Like you're walking on a loose rein, why not walk between the cones, which is where she needed to go the first time. You know, and sometimes like if I'm taking a clinic or something and I've got a horse who's a little suspicious about things, while the clinician is talking, like when it's appropriate, when I can, I'm sneaking around and my horse is checking out the jumps and stuff like that. Right? You may as well take every opportunity you have to expose her to the world of show jumping that she's going to have to deal with. Okay, so the line was very good. You were a little long at the pole, but she made a good effort there. The two, the five, and the two and the five worked out great, and then that would have been great except for the big spook and the wiggle, right? But you still got the job done. So let's come do it that right away again. Now, if she's going to spook again, it'll be the same thing flying to the right. So just really think about firming up your right leg and looking at my hands for a sec. Right? So this hand blocks her right shoulder, so that becomes like a bearing rein. Um, against the neck, the other rein is opening rein, so both hands are saying, hey, get to the left. So make sure you have enough horse at the beginning of the exercise that the first two is easy, then the five will be normal to slightly waiting, and then the last two is going to be all about steering and keeping your outside leg. Beautiful. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Very good, and praise her there. Good girl. Good, Leah. I like how quickly you caught her there when she made the mistake of breaking. So let's change rein, Leo, and we're going to do the same exercise off the right now. Okay, so just right lead canter, starting at this end now, same thing, two, five, and two. So I'm starting from the same that way? No, oh, you're starting up by C, and you're coming, you're doing the exact thing you just did the other way. Good, now get your flow, look at the pull, one, two, that's okay. So she may well spook going through this the other way, right? Now you're going to have to guard her left side. Looking, be ready with your outside leg, outside leg, outside leg. Good. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, come on. Woo. So... <laughs> Not only is the exercise a mirror image, but we have mirror image spooky gates. Go through the cones, Leo! We just talked about that missed opportunity the other side. Look, go through the cones.
Does that make sense? Like you don't want her to, to think, oh, I veered sideways, now I'm gonna go around and go sideways again. Just go right back where she should have gone easily the first time, right? Okay, off you go again. So um, Shane, Barb was on her toughest form yesterday. And it might have been just over the top for for Ren. For Ren. Yeah. It was it, like she's good, she's great, but holy crap, was she tough yesterday! And there's just not a lot of you know warm fuzzy, right? Like it's like do it right now. Yeah, totally. I think Emily's parents were a little bit like. What's going on? <laughs> They're not used to that. Okay, now praise her for the nice straight exit and the nice lead change. Good job, Leo. So the nice thing with her is even though <coughs> she's suspicious, once she's once she's dealt with it, she kind of moves on, right? She doesn't keep hanging on to, oh, every time I go by that, I'm going to spook to the outside. Okay, so let's give her a little walk break. We're going to do this again. What I'm going to add now is add little tiny jumps coming in. I want you to think about, in your two point, staying over your legs, keeping your legs back a little more. So think about that even on your approach. Okay, are my, are my legs back and under me? Hi. <laughs> How was your ride, Kim? It was interesting. Oh yeah? Okay, so stand straight up for a sec. Stand up. Nope, keep walking. It's too easy if you're standing still. Good. Now keep your legs there and sit back down. Good. Okay, Leo. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead and pick up your counter, come down the grid. Just like how we were doing before. Two, five, and two. your lead, keep the counter, good. So she jumped so hard to the left, she kicked the cone. Yeah, I saw that. And then she's really off her track, right? And you, you had to fight a little bit to kind of get her back over the cross rail. Then we've created a lot of, not a lot, but then you've got a little too much horse. So then the five got a bit tight. And as we've added the jumps on the end and as these jumps go up, the five is gonna start to feel tighter and tighter. Right, so then you need to be able to land and recover and just ask her to wait for those five strides. <laughs> Come on, spooky mama.
Okay, let's try that again. You just march right in where he's going to circle and then come down. Thank you. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Woo. Sorry, I thought you were going right to the mountain block, but I was like, march right in. <laughs> So unfortunately, I couldn't see you uh, why you hit this jump down there, Leo. What do you think happened? Okay. Okay. All right. Show that to me again. This up a bit. Take your time. Get your lead. Dig in with your leg. Half out the outside rein. Good. Whoa, whoa. Now is that Blaze or is that Leo? Try to slow down. Where? Where are you trying to slow her down? Are you sure? Okay, let's refocus. So we want to talk about the grid. So in with the jump in, she's having a heart attack getting to the vertical. Right foot. So then you actually solved the problem in the two strides. She was absolutely straight. The two strides was great. But now because she was having a heart attack going to the vertical, her adrenaline is up. She's going way too fast. So here you need to get down in your saddle with your legs bent and pull on both reins and ask her to slow down, okay? So what I'm saying is make sure that you're not just thinking, oh, we're going kind of fast, but you're actually getting her to slow down, right? Like you have to have a bigger effect on her there. So I know picking up the right lead canter, she gets a little spazzy because she doesn't like it, right? Just she, she often hops her bum and that kind of thing. So you just set her up as quietly as you can. Then what can we do here to make her a little bit smoother to the vertical? Yes, go closer to yeah, I think so. Make that a little bit square turn. Give yourself a little more time. At the same time, coming into the vertical, you need to have wide, smooth hands, right? Because if you're managing her too much, she's already stressed out, and then it's just too much, right? She starts to throw her head in the air, get a little bit worried. So let's do your big circle. Now use your space. Look at your vertical early. Make sure your hands are like this, okay? And then when you jump in, you need to land and wait, right? Two even reins, legs bent. Okay, look uh, also where your stirrup has gone, right? There you go. Okay, Leah, we'll try that again. Now, she's done this exercise a couple times this week and been very good about it, so I, I think she can just settle into it nicely now, but you need to make sure that she's not building and building and going quicker and quicker. So what are you doing We're just doing the grid. Yeah, thank you. So take your time. Just try that again, Leo. Back to trot. Oh, make sure the outside leg is pushing her hips in before you ask for the canter. Push her hips inwards. Yes, beautifully done. Now settle. Oh, good. Looking up, hands need to be much wider. Looking to your jump. Yes, good ride. Now, whoa. 
Perfect. Good ride, Leo. Circle, get the hind legs. Outside rain hard. Good, you got it. Okay, so give her a pat and a walk break. That was so much better ridden, Leo. Like you were right on top of each part of it. So she never got away from you, right? The canter transition was better. You used your space. You already thought about waiting in the two. You landed and thought about waiting right away in the five this time. And so then by the time you're on about stride three, your job's pretty much done, right? You're just like, oh, okay, I've got two more nice strides, right? Because you had waited early enough and gotten the job done enough that you didn't have to keep waiting here. So that was perfect. So we'll give her a minute to catch her breath and then we'll do that on the left. Whoa. Nice, really good with your leg all the way down, Leo. Big pat for her. Good girl. Okay, good, pat and a break again, right? When she's good, we need to give her those rewards. Okay, Leo, make sure she's just got a long rein and relaxing. And what we're going to do in a second here is do the grid off the left again. Then you're going to jump the vertical where Lucy is here. Then you're going to bend out in four strides and then jump the two stride. So, okay, you're jumping this vertical and then out and then straight over those two verticals. So this is a little bit of a tricky bending line because it's a short bending line, right? Like if you had seven strides between your jumps, there's a lot more time to get organized for your next one. In four and with not a ton of room to get your bend, it's a little bit trickier. And you almost need to think about in the first two strides, your right leg is more important because you don't want her to fall in. And then in your next two strides, your left leg becomes more important to get the turn done. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, but he, uh, they're part of my birthday present and they have fleece on the inside. They're really comfortable, but they're quite big. We're going to have to shrink them in the dryer, but he got he got the wrong size and then I told him, okay, I think I'm a size smaller than that. I don't know what size I am. So I'm like, okay, I think I'm a size smaller than that. So he went back and got them again, brought them home. They were too big. So I'm like, okay, I guess I'm a size smaller than that. So that's these ones. Yeah. And then they're probably still a size too big, but then I didn't want to send them back again. So we're just going to shrink them in the dryer. <laughs> but yeah, they feel like, they feel like you're wearing pajamas because they have the fleece inside. Very nice. Okay, Leo, you got your plan? So he's just doing the grid. Yep. And then he's doing the bending line from the vertical back to these two here. Make sure she's awake after her walk break. Nice. Now stretch up, get organized, best canter. Need to make sure she knows where she's going. Look. Good effort. Good effort, Leo. Okay, Leo, big pat for her. And I'm really happy with how you sorted out the bending line in the last two, right? Because that's something new and she's always a little bit unsure and you did a really good job of letting her know where to go there. 
Now, she's in the spooky mode today, and so I moved the pole, so then she spooks at the pole. This is always something that she can think of to spook at. Something I want to develop in you, and as you kind of transition from being a kid rider into a more adult rider, is the kick is very, uh, the kick is for kids. Do you know what I mean? Like when your legs are this big and you're riding ponies and they can't feel your legs and you've got to kick the saddle like this, right? <laughs> it's necessary when you're little, okay? But as you grow into your riding and become more educated, the kick is very rarely your best option, okay? So here, when she's spooking, you absolutely need to get your leg on, but I would just use your power leg, right? Like just instead of your leg being on five pounds on the other side, it needs to go on 20 pounds on either side. Right, like you just need to close your leg there. The problem with kicking is you take your leg off and then on, and in the off, sometimes you lose your horse. Right, you lose, it, you lose their brain or you lose their motivation or whatever it is, or you lose your balance or whatever it is. It's just not usually your best choice. Okay, I think it was quite good. I'd like to do this part one more time. Even though it was good, it can be better. So let's come off the left and you're just gonna do the bending line, the four stride and the two again. Okay, and then I'm gonna change the grid and we'll finish with it a little bit different. Leo. Okay, a walk and a pat for her. I'm going to add our last jump to our grid. Okay, Leo. Grid off the left. Bending line. Four to the two again. And then this time, after you do your two stride, I want you to circle around, use your space, and jump back over this one again. So now I've just added one more jump, so everything is a two in here. Two, 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 two. Make sure she's on her job. It's coming up the grid. Make sure your leg is on, but that it's not pushing her faster, right? She needs to maintain her rhythm through each part. One, two. One, two. Wait, wait, wait. If I lose my ability to speak. Good. Continue to your four. Not too shabby there, Leo. Give her a nice pat. Uh-oh. I forgot about your last jump. So what I was going to say is that the four is, the four is getting done in such a way that your two is a bit crooked. Right? She's jumping into your bending line, okay. Going a little past the turn and then she's jumping the two stride like that. Okay, so those cones are there to help keep you and her centered. But part of what's gonna keep you centered is to make sure that your left leg has closed the door on this side just a little bit earlier. Right, and it's not left leg with no right leg, it's just the left leg is getting firmer through this last part of the turn. 
so that then both legs can be equal riding your two strides straight. We're gonna do your bending line to the two first. And here, Leo, when she's jumping this one, I want you to look over her outside ear. Okay, so here's her ears, look over her outside ear, make sure you're trying to ride as straight as possible on landing. Both legs, both legs, both legs. On, look, two, three, four, straight. Yeah, good, better with your eyes, right? You're, you held your body much straighter there. Good job, Leo. Okay, nice pat for her. We're gonna do our pattern one more time and then she is done, 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 because she's jumped a lot of jumps today. She's been a very good girl. She's trying hard. So I've added the oxer. If you wanted to, for insurance, you could go look down Go look at the oxer to ensure that you get the job done there the first time, right? That she doesn't land off that last vertical and go, oh my goodness, this is different. Little more horse here, Leo. Keep the legs, stretch up. Nice, good job. Now balance around the left leg. Steady two, steady two, steady two. Okay. So our only problem there, Leo, is that you never really got your canter organized after the grid. Like she was really good all the way down the grid, jumped the oxer really well, and then you, you, she, she was a little, I can't talk today, it's the end of the weekend. Six days of teaching, my tongue starts to do this, right? Okay, so jump the oxer really well, and then through the corner, looked a little scrambly and a little fast. I'm like, okay, good, bend, bend, because it looked like you were getting your bending aids on, but then you also need to get her back, right? So coming off the wall, she hasn't really come back, and then every step is getting away from you. So then all of a sudden, it's almost like you want to leave that last stride out. So, you know, you maybe we're going to leave the ground here. Luckily, she didn't. She fit the last stride in, but then she's pushing off one leg here. I'm getting there fast and pushing off one leg there, right? So she's out of balance at both jumps. So we need to do that again. Rebalance your canter, get it organized, and then every step needs to be a regular step all the way here. Okay, and that allows your four to be nice, which allows your two to be nice. Yeah. Mama. Mama Sita, you're being a good girl. Okay. The famous one more time. I uh, just starting up the grid again on the left there. Thanks. Keep your engine working. Lovely. Now rebalance. Steady. Oh. Yes, batter, Leo. Batter, good job. Oh, 
Pak. Okay. So still needed to be a little bit shorter balancing in terms of getting a little better distance coming into your bending line. But because you were thinking about balancing on the way there, she landed and was much quicker coming back to you, right? She didn't continue rolling down the hill to the next jump. So it was a, a, much, a much more regular four strides in here so then she can push off the ground better. Okay, good. <laughs> Hard working girl. So she's gonna need a good cool down. Okay, why don't you do a couple minutes of trotting? Right, because she jumped a lot of jumps today. So you're gonna need to trot for a few minutes, serpentines, changes of direction, and then walk and cool her down in the walk after that. Okay. okay, when they've done a lot of jumping, just like us, if we've been running or whatever, you need to slowly bring the heart rate down. Let those muscles work without doing anything too hard for a little bit before you put them away. Okay, well done. Position looked awesome in the grid. Very cool.